Welcome to a Southworth Duplex Boiler Feed Pump Service. This one is part three. There is a quick and simple way to stop the worn piston and valve rod glands from leaking. I'll tell you about the simple method in a future episode. Then there is the proper way to do the job. New O-rings all round, including the pistons. This method requires the pump to be disassembled. I have to admit that I am a virgin. I think I'd better explain. By that, I mean that I have never disassembled one of these pumps. There's a first time for everything. You've got to start somewhere, and I thought the best place to start would be to remove the cylinder covers from the water pump end. And that's what I'm doing at the moment. I've removed both of the covers, and here I'm removing the gasket. The good news is, both of the gaskets were serviceable. At this stage, I'm going to mention that there is a mechanical problem with this pump. This fault wasn't reported when I received the pump. The original description was, the glands are leaking and I think the timing's out. Nothing was mentioned that one side of the pump was much stiffer than the other side when you push the piston in and out. I'm hoping that this is an alignment issue and not a damaged piston or cylinder. The pistons at the water pump cylinder end are held in place by a nut on each of the end of the piston rods. The nut on one of the pistons was a bit tight, so I fitted the socket ratchet device to the end of the special screwdriver. Then the nut came off quite easily. I don't want to disturb the position where the valve gear is connected to the piston rod, so here I'm tightening the allen bolts. I'm using my barco spanner just to get a bit more leverage, but I'm not overdoing the pressure. Now these four allen caphead bolts are tight onto the piston rods, so I don't think they'll be moving any time soon. In this clip I'm removing one of the nuts from the piston rod, and now I'm doing exactly the same on the right-hand cylinder. I decided to call this the right-hand cylinder just from the camera's viewpoint. Once I'd removed these lock nuts, I thought, well, all I have to do now is separate the cylinder from the rest of the assembly, then I can simply slide off the cylinder block from the mounting rods. There are three mounting rods, one at each side and one at the bottom, all secured by 2BA bolts. After removing the three 2BA nuts that hold everything together, it was time to slide the water cylinders away from the steam cylinder. But alas, it's not that simple. The pistons are threaded onto the piston rods, and the nuts that I removed were just lock nuts. As you've just seen, I tried to remove the assembly several times, with no success whatsoever. From my experience, normally when pistons are screwed onto threaded piston rods, they have a couple of holes to take a pair of circlip pliers to unwind them. But at the water cylinder end, there don't appear to be any holes for circlip pliers. Time to give the job a bit of thought, and while I'm doing that, it's a good idea to remove the steam inlet and the displacement lubricator. That makes the pump much easier to handle, and there's less chance of damaging the very nice displacement lubricator. So far, every bolt that I've removed has a washer, and this is no exception, so I put the washers very carefully into the red plastic box. When you see a red cross like this in my videos, it means, please do not do this. And in this case, removing the cylinder covers at the front of the water chest cylinders is not necessary. Removing all these very small bolts really would have taken a long time. So I've engaged my brain. I'm removing the two BA nuts from the three rods that hold the water cylinder to the steam cylinder. A couple of these were a pain. They were loose all the way up until the very last couple of threads when they became tight and I had to use the spanner again. This is probably something to do with a bit of rust right at the end of the threads. This job didn't take very long at all and now the nuts are in the red box. Some viewers may be thinking, why did I bother doing this? Well, the answer's quite simple. I used my brain and thought about the job. Although I must state, at this stage, there are different ways to do the job you're about to see me do. But as I mentioned earlier, I want to do this job without disturbing the position of the blocks on the piston rods. Because they are definitely in the right place. Once again, the red X says, do not do this. 
I'm just demonstrating what not to do. I'm not putting any pressure on the piston itself. There is a much easier and quicker method to remove a thing like this, which is on a threaded bar. And now it's time for a top tip. If you want to remove a piston from a piston rod, use a cable tie, pull it as tight as you possibly can, and then snip off the excess. Then first of all, try to turn it to see whether it spins the piston off the rod, then use a pair of pliers on the cable tie. This compresses the cable tie and presses it hard against the piston, allowing you to rotate the piston off the piston rod like this. And once the piston is no longer tight on the rod, you can just rotate the cable tie to spin the piston off the rod altogether. And here you can see what I mean, the piston is off the piston rod. In the next episode it will become apparent that there are different ways to do this job. But at this stage, not having a drawing for this engine and never having done this job before, I'm figuring it out as I go. Here's the first piston out of the cylinder and I'm cleaning it up with a piece of Scotch-Brite because I want to write on it. This is the left-hand piston from the water cylinder. So with a Sharpie felt-tip pen, I'm putting a letter L on it. I'm going to show the difference between the old silicone O-ring and the new one. And as you can see, they are very different. The O-ring that I've taken from the piston is flat around its outside edge, whereas the new one is round, as you would expect it to be. I'll zoom in a bit closer just in case you're struggling to see this, or as usually in my case, I never have the right glasses. In this highly magnified clip, you can see the difference between the two rings easily. The one on the left is very flat around the outside edge. In this clip, I'm reusing the cable tie to remove this piston. You can also use this cable tie method to compress cast iron piston rings. In no time at all, this piston is now in my hand rather than on the piston rod. In exactly the same way as with the previous piston, once I'd got it off the rod, I wrote on the end of it, but this time I'm putting a letter R on this one for right. I'm now removing the old piston ring. Once the ring was removed, I discarded it, and here I'm about to fit the new piston ring. First of all, I put some steam oil in the groove. A word of caution here, always use steam oil on silicone rubber, because it doesn't attack it. Some oils with additives can attack silicone. And that is it for this episode. Once again, you can see the worn piston ring between my finger and thumb, and the new piston ring fitted to the piston. All that remains to be said is stay safe, stay healthy, thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website, and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.